Okay, uh, let me start this first lecture, which is relative with the history of organic farming. And meanwhile, because there will be some definitions coming out, so you also need to write it also. So, koshish karega, you can keep writing the same points. I will not be in a very speedy manner, uh, slow chalunga, so that you can understand. Uh, let me start with the first slide that we have it. Uh, everybody know him because uh, he is one of the renowned scientists and uh, Sir Albert Howard, he is a British botanist and also considered the father of modern organic agriculture. Whatever the organic agriculture that is prevailed nowadays worldwide, all the theories which are concepts which has been done and established, it was by him and he was a British scientist and from 1905 to 1924, he also worked as an advisor in Bengal. It's surprisingly one of the most interesting point it is because he also worked in Indian conditions with the laborers, with the farmers there itself. And he actually understood what is the traditional Indian farming happening. So people who ever don't know about the history of organic agriculture in India, let me tell you, remind you again, the Indian organic history, it is like 1940s and back. We, we had it this one, but we never used the word as organic. So he documented all of these things, the traditional practices. And he published one of the most renowned books on organic agriculture by the name Agricultural Testament. Okay. If anybody is missing to write something, just unmute it and just let me know so that I can move to the next slide. Okay. Anytime. Okay. Moving on to the next slide. Now, Howard was working with the, all the kind of the organic materials that is available and he actually gave one of the law, which is known as the law of return. Yes, the law of return, it says whatever the organic waste which is generated, it could be anything, including the sewage sludge, it has to be returned to the farm that. That was a law. It is not only the law of nature, it is also considered the law of return. He was very much emphasizing on this point. So whatever the uh, materials on the inputs that we are using it in the organic agriculture, it should be kept in mind to be recycled or return it back to the farms. And another most important point, one of the first prominent compost method which was developed in India, it was indoor method. And this indoor method was given by Sir Albert Howard himself. This was one of the scientific method he developed. He said what could be the size of the pit, what could be the moisture content should be retained, what should be the amount of heat should be uh, there, how many times it should be uh, turned, and what kind of materials it should be required. Either it's an animal, or maybe plant mixes, or maybe any kind of the uh, cow urine and so on. All right. And not only this one, he published a one book and very later part which was related with the any kind of the agriculture farming and what will be the relationship with the health or any kind of the disease that we follow. The book name is Soil and Health. That was the name, Soil and Health. He has intensively working with different crops and he mentioned it, uh, if you can see the last three lines, he said it, any diseases in the plants animals or maybe humans it is caused only due to the unhealthy soil and this can be redone means you can be cured make it healthy again by the proper farming techniques so if you're working on the very uh, prominent on positive side of the farming like the organic farming within the soil itself it actually helps not only the soil but also the health of the any kind of the living organism same time so that was published in the book, Soil and Health. Moving on to the next one. Now, in the later part of the uh, early 50s, in 1946, uh, Albert Howard, he was also looking like what kind of the agribusiness is prevailing in the Britain and other parts. He was not so happy with the conditions as uh, the business they are looking at the agriculture. 
so via the means of the competition he published one book the name of the book was the war in the soil he raised the questions to all the businessmen people who ever dealing with the agriculture like the agriculture that you are doing in is actually none other thing is just a mere business and deteriorating the soil health as well as the human health too so and that was the first time somebody was raising the questions on the direct industrialist because he has understood that organic is one of the major important part of farming which can maintain this ecosystem now as you can see is a very prominent name rudolf steiner he was actually australian um, austrian philosopher but at the same time he was working in germany and rudolf steiner considered as one of the primary scientist who built that biodynamic farming he was the first person who came out with this idea of biodynamic farming many of us maybe heard about this name like biodynamic but before that i'll ask any person that who can tell me the name uh, what is biodynamic farming anybody can tell harshita can you hear me if you can hear me just uh, give me the answer so hello anyone anyone can answer if you know that biodynamic farming sir biodynamic farming mein sir sare elements ek hi sath rehte hain matlab forest field plants animals soil compost people so matlab animals uh, so basically they are pata hai isko aur sare kind of materials use karte hain anything special which is make it different than others so it was uh, it was related about uh, the involvement of the cosmic forces into the agriculture oh, the how the cosmic sources. forces affect it okay yes sir so like what kind of a cosmic sources or some different uh, uh, sir the uh, a special mixture was prepared uh, using the different uh, different materials and uh, that uh, uh, he uh, elaborated that um, the nature of uh, the energy of the stars and planets also, uh, and the moving planets uh, mm. told the plan uh, told the farmers how the cropping uh, time and uh, sowing time and so all had to be decided time, irrigation time right right exactly now there are so many ways that uh, uh, any kind of the agri techniques which has been developed or has been planned uh, you can use them by the knowing the science of the cosmology as the same time astrophysics we also call it sometimes this word uh, moving on like this is the one of the things that is very prevailing here like we can see why biodynamic is different than organic it here it is a method which is definitely using any kind of the fermented herbs or mineral preparations like bd 556 bd 1103 and so on there are so many names which has been if you can see a picture that picture at the right hand side it shows you that there is a hoof ye agar aap kaise seeing hai jisme aapko kisi bhi tarike ke mineral preparation ko taiyar kiya jata hai it has been kept buried under the soil for many days and uh, it has been says the this fermented material which is known as biodynamic bd some uh, code words were given it means it has been prepared one hoof could be almost equivalent to apply in the one acre area also and that is much 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 more intensive in the nutrient content so many and all kind of these sprays as you can see in the last two lines in this biodynamic it helps to give the a calendar prepared based on the cosmology any kind of like when you have to irrigate what should be the best time of sowing okay when should we harvesting it why what is the picking timing of this and how many times we should give the intervals and so on and so on this is totally based on the astrological science moving on okay uh, now we come to this point like how come albert howard was working on the organic but this word has not been used by used by him organic was the word which has not used by the albert howard earlier 
he used the traditional farming permanent agriculture and so many different names were given but organic word was not never used by him. it was the one of the british agronomists known as lord northcott he used this word and he mentioned this word in his very popular book look to the land it was published in 1940 look to the land now he gave the concept the concept was known as the farm as an organic whole what it means farm as an organic whole in simple words in the farm itself you can have development all kind of the inputs without any external inputs requirement same time one of the ways can be utilized in another way okay recycling could be possible and it is the holistic approach where biodiversity has been maintained without destroying the nature balance so lord northburn was a scientist who used this word organic farm moving on now as a time being has been forwarded some of the scientists he were very much uh, inspired by the what northburn was working there was one lady in uh, britain lady eve balfour she was very much influenced by her the albert howard's work and she did some experiment in the uh, some of the farms in england in england he she developed one of the farm which is known as howley experiment in this experiment it has been clearly documented in history this is the one of the first scientific side by side comparison side by side comparison means she divided her farm into two different far types of the farming one part was doing organic second part was doing the conventional farm and whatever the experiment results it came out she developed a report and that report has been published as a book with the name of the living soil that was a name the living soil that was her uh, total documented work of four and four years and so on and it definitely helps to develop certain standards and some of the society at the same time which is working to promote organic agriculture there was one international organic group was developed the name soil association which was totally and 100% depended or actually inspired by the comparative work done by the lady eve before the soil association there is a one website of uh, the soil association you can see in the next slide this one this one there is a official website of them, the soil association it actually helping to develop the uh, philosophy of organic throughout the world they are also helping to provide the certifications they also help you to develop the protocols what kind of doc uh, documentations required if somebody is looking for certification in england and so on now uh, have you heard this name fukuoka many of you heard about this fukuoka okay any special point that he mentioned any student can share ranjali hai so he had given the concept of natural farming natural farming okay what is the difference yes, that sir. natural farming created from the organic farming uh, sir i don't i'm not sure if i remember correctly but mm -hmm. uh, it's somewhat like uh, what we have in our forests where uh, the human intervention is not included into the agriculture plan human intervention was not included some of the point was uh, correct but uh, there was slight difference that I, I want to say it uh, 
Now, Fukuoka is actually one of the Japanese microbiologists. He has a keen interest to work with the nature. He never applied to go against the nature. He has been seeing the uh, forest areas a long time since his childhood. And he came to the conclusion like whether or not it's always the nature can develop a certain biodiversity by itself. Means we should not go for any kind of the troubles. We should not go for any kind of a hindrances or any kind of the uh, manual uh, manipulations in the farm itself. He developed the model which is known as no-till farming. No-till farming. And that practice, he done it for more than 30 years. And uh, Fukuoka was one of the organic scientists in Japan itself, pioneer scientist, who developed a very different theory other than organic. It was the advanced stage of organic agency, which is known as Fukuoka farming. He gave some principles. The principle means some steps involved. What, kind, what is the actually Fukuoka farming? Those five principles, he mentioned it. It says it. We should not do any kind of fertilage. We should not go find any application of the fertilizers. Not required. No chemicals. Does not need to go for any weeding. He was very much influencing about the biodiversity to maintain. And no need to go for pruning. And this is totally very similar to the natural farming that exists. So a difference between natural farming and the Fukuoka farming is only is it this is something which is commercialized one. Natural farming is something which is not commercialized, which has itself in the nature done. Now, all these principle based Fukuoka farming has been developed and it was published in a book, one of the most popular book, which is known as One Straw Revolution. You can see the picture of the book also at the right side of it. One Straw Revolution. This is the first book he uh, documented. And it was widely accepted in Asia. That was, you can say that it was the first time farming has been started in uh, Asian countries as an organic. Now, if anyone have any uh, question, you can ask me now. I can just take a uh, two minutes uh, pause. If you have any question, you can ask. We can continue then. Any question? No? Okay, keep moving. Uh, I cannot see the chat box. I want to see that if there somebody have a question, so I can see that. But okay, uh, I cannot see the chat box in, uh, in any manner. If you have a question, just directly uh, unmute your speaker and just ask me. Okay? Okay, I'll continue. Now, uh, a part of the first book, which is very popular, One Star Revolution, he also developed some other books which shows the major principles involved, like Road Back to the Nature. And the third book he published that was also known as Natural Way of Farming. Natural Way of Farming. Moving on. Now, this scientist, the uh, Rodel, his full name was Jaromi Irving Rodel. But in, in short, I'm very popularly he known as Rodel. Because the one of the institute he developed, one of the first institute he developed in USA with the name of Rodel Research Institute in New York. Now people may be thinking Rodel was actually an American businessman. He had a he was an industrialist, he has a very uh, supportive work. He has a very large scale of industrial work also at the same time. But slowly, slowly he came to know about this idea of working with the nature as organic farming. And in early 50s or 60s timing, USA was under the industrial revolution. Means chemical farming was coming as one of the uh, extreme revolutions to improve the yield and providing all kind of hiring varieties and so on. At that particular moment, the Rodel, he came with this idea of sustainable agriculture. He heard this word. And he wanted to know the Western world about this agriculture too. 
so he developed very long reports and so many reports which is scientific reports under the institute name of Riddell Research Institute he want to let the people know about the sustainable agriculture what is sustainable agriculture what is organic farming how does it has been done because USA at that particular moment does not know it is any way to do farming without chemicals at the same time this is the official website of Rodell Institute that you can see on your screen also and this is two at the same and they have been working from 1947 and slowly and lately their scientific reports have been recognized they have been accomplished by the uh, associations and organizations also by the FAO the food and agriculture organization it apart you won't believe it these Rodell reports have helped the American government to develop the standards of the organics at the same time now another interesting point is somebody will ask you what is the oldest Rodell Institute experiment one of the largest organic farm and the oldest one it has been developed by the Rodell Institute this is the picture of it and they gave the very specific registered name the Rodell Institute farming systems trial FST in this slide you can see from 1981 this FST which is farming systems trial is considered as the longest running side by side comparison longest running see from the 1980s on and now till now few people can say it's more than 40 48 49 years happen now near to 50 years we are away and they clearly mention it there is a chance to improve the yield to improve the biodiversity to provide a positivity in the nature just by doing the organic farming they have a long term results with them and those supported documents really help the American society, the American government to develop certain certifications. Now, what actually happened in the last point you can see in the slide in 2002 on October, the USDA certified organic label was introduced. The Agriculture Department of United States they come out with their first organic label. It was all with the help of the Rodell Institute. Similarly, iPhone was working in the European countries to promote the ideas of organic at the same time. It was like a movement. It was not organizationally, it was considered as the movement. And in 1972, it was established in France. Slowly and lately, it has been started with more than 50 countries. And now more than 180 countries have been registered under the IFO. And they are working in a coordination with this, the biggest association. What are the major objectives that they are doing IFO? They actually are providing all the certification standards uh, country-wise according to their protocols and their guidelines which has been developed and at the same time they are also helping to go for the certification agency establishment country-wise same time now coming to the some parts of the history in Indian condition uh, I think in uh, less than five minutes we will completing this part uh, because I will stop here. So it will be uh, later. I will take the feedback from you. Any problem that exists or something? Okay. Moving on. Uh, in India, organic farming was never registered as one of the uh, protocol or, or as a guideline under Indian government. It never happened before uh, 1995 and 97. Even in 1990s before, in America it was not there. So you can say that more than 10 years it took for India to develop certain uh, 
committee which can promote organic agriculture in india so one of the first task force was established by the with the uh, chairmanship of dr kumar ji bhai yadav he was the ex director in gujarat and you won't believe it the committee when it was developed the swaminathan committee was also working with them to develop certain protocols and organic standards in india itself at the same time otherwise what is actually happening anyone is selling their products in the name of organic there was no rules there were no standards there were no organic certifications so by this one there was a chaos in the market they are getting the purchasing goods at a higher prices but the quality was at a brisk so at the high time in the 2000 the committee was established and this committee was advocated we should be promoting the organic farming first it has been started from the rain fed areas now the reason is very clear why the rain fed areas should be chosen first to start the organic farming and also the northeastern states the point to be noted is that organic farming is actually related with the exclusion of the fertilizers and these rain fed areas and north eastern states they are already uh, consuming at a very lesser amount of this so any conversion is required from the traditional farming to the organic farming it is possible if we utilize these state first of all to convert it them into organic so this is one of the reason this is was the planning earlier days then in indian documentation also the largest area occupied by the madhya pradesh that is a well known fact about organic but a part of this madhya pradesh was the first state who took this word in a leading way later on some other states are also joined and they have been working to develop or we can say that declaring them as the organic states like uttaranchal uttarakhand as well as the sikkim too now in april 2000 the program was developed or launched by the ministry of commerce in april 2000 ministry of commerce they developed which is known as national organic program it was a full fledged program under the ministry and they have been working with the apeda together and both of them in their coordinations they were working to develop the standards certifications as well as establishment of the certification agencies private or as well as government both together in it and the program was promoted with the name of national program of organic production this was a launching campaign by the ministry of commerce as well as the capita together npop national program of organic production okay guys uh in the next class i will decide a timing later on or maybe you can suggest me the best timing that could be possible for you i will go with this uh, principles and the concept of organic farming